clear on my message to, on Thursday to the people of Ontario. That, that's what you call leadership, admitting if there was a mistake, moving forward and making sure we go on with our agenda. But that's not going, that's, that is not going to deter us from building 1.5 million homes. How many times do we have to have a Premier who lies to Ontarians and then apologizes and says, oh, just forget about it, it's okay. Not acceptable. A real apology is when you actually do something that corrects what happened. And what the Premier could do here is admit that this was wrong. Ontario Premier Doug Ford, as you heard, they're still dogged by the Greenbelt controversy, facing contentious questions from opposition leaders today on the first day back in the legislature. Last week, the Premier apologized for breaking a promise never to open Greenbelt land to development and fully reverse course on the issue. But is it enough to shake the controversy? The front bench is back. Sabrina Grover, Shakir Chambers, Garatan Singh and Mia Rabzin are here. Garatan, I'll, I'll start with you. From a I know you've been in that legislature opposite the Premier, but from a purely strategic point of view, explain the thinking behind the opposition. He apologized. He's not doing it anymore. Why is this advantageous for, from their perspective to stay on? To stay on top of this subject because it's such an important subject for Ontarians. And the issue itself still has so many questions that are uh, remaining. We're talking about a Premier who was involved in a process that had a tiny group of conservative donors profiting in the billions of dollars. And the Premier did make a mistake. He did apologize for this mistake. But now there's more that needs to be done. There needs to be accountability. People need to understand why this corruption was allowed to happen. And there needs to be steps to be taken to make sure it doesn't happen again. In addition, when we see the NDP tabling legislation that would actually protect the Green Belt, you now see the Premier voting and the Conservative Party voting against that kind of legislation, which is just, it, it will be perceived as a bad faith sign. This has been a really rough couple months for the Premier. He's had three ministers resign, a chief of staff resign. It's you know been scandal after scandal. And I think his reversal on some actions today just continue to paint him in a bad light. So, so Sabrina, let me ask you a similar question. From a strategic point of view, the opposition sits you down and says, look, is it advantageous for us to keep going in the same direction? Or does that apology last week, that acknowledgement that he was wrong, like, you know, it took a while to get there, but it certainly was not something you hear from politicians every day. Does it force us to think of, uh, you know, going in a different direction? What would you tell them? Um, well, I would say that Doug Ford has a really good ability to look at himself and look at things that he's done and uh, react to them with an, a semblance of humility. But I think it's a little bit rich to call uh, this apology in and of itself leadership. Uh, when, as Gretchen mentioned, this is a more than a billion dollar scandal, right? And so if I was the opposition, I, I would continue to press on on this issue. He's broken the public trust. Uh, in more ways than one, not only by just removing the, the green belt protected lands, but also by um, giving this you know, sweetheart deal to certain uh, developers within the region. And not only is it costing taxpayers on that front, but it's also going to cost them money from the RCMP perspective to investigate. And so you've got a multi-level scandal uh, that continues to cost taxpayers money. At the outset, we also don't have houses which are being built, which it's a once in a generation problem that the, you know, that the country needs to deal with. And it's a distraction from the issue. It's costing everybody a lot of money. And I would definitely advise that the opposition continues to press on it. The only quick caveat I'd add is it's referred to the RCMP. We don't net yet know for sure that they're going to investigate, but certainly the, the questions are being asked. Shakir, do you think the fact that it took as long as it did for the Premier to do what he used to do a lot earlier when he faced big issues and, and big problems, that is, admit he was wrong and reverse course, he seemed like he was really dragged to that point, right? It took a number of months. Do you think that deflates the impact of it politically? No, I mean, I, I think one of the reasons he apologized is they probably saw some internal data that, that was pretty damning, right? You're talking about a premier that was 41% in July uh, with public approval and came down to like low 30s uh, at this time. So I think for him, he probably just saw that he can't keep going on this course. And his apology, I think, was to kind of take, take the big issue away from the opposition. It doesn't put it to rest, but I think it mutes some of the criticisms, the fact that he is going to reverse this, right? It's not going forward as, as once thought. The fact that it took 10 months, it might be a bit of an issue, but Vash, you and I spoke before, and you know, Doug Ford is one of those unique politicians. Say what you want to say about him. You don't have to like him, but 
he's one guy where he can apologize on his issues, and people actually buy it. People like, like this folksy nature of him. They'd be like, oh, you know, he got it wrong. Okay, move in a different direction. And I think he gets away with a lot of that. This might not be any different. I would say one thing. If I were the NDP or any of the other opposition leaders, I would actually not focus on the green belt. I would look at some other issues dealing with land planning or MZOs and see what's there. I think the green belt issue itself is going to be put to rest very shortly. And if you're the opposition, you want to have this story drag out. And the story is not developing on the green belt. The story is Doug Ford and insiders. So look at some more connections, do some oppo research, and see what's there. Uh, Mia, last word to you on this. Certainly, I think if there's one thing in the Greenbelt controversy that struck a chord with Ontarians and that internal polling that caucus saw drove this home, it was that issue of the idea that the Premier was more interested in helping insiders or his friends, that accusation, than the, the public at large. Uh, do you see that continuing to per permeate debate in Ontario politically? Absolutely, mainly because for the opposition parties, it's been working. It's a message they've been sending. Clearly, it's had an impact on on Ford and and his government. Uh, I don't see the opposition parties walking away from that anytime soon, and I'd be surprised if they haven't already been trying to find other links uh, to between Doug Ford and and other developers or or, or other people of of uh, influence. Uh, this issue isn't going to go away. He has to have now to introduce legislation in order to undo it, which gives the opposition a whole new sort of runway to to continue to go after them on it. Uh, all of this comes with the caveat that it is 2023. Uh, we're not going to see an election in Ontario for at least another three years. That's a long time. It's it's going to hurt him now. It's going to hurt him probably for several more months. Is it going to hurt him in three years? That's a really hard to say, hard. It's really hard to say that it still will be hurting him in three years. Hard to look into our crystal balls, but we will try. Thank you so much to the front bench tonight. Really appreciate the discussion. Uh, Sabrina Grover, Shakir Chambers, Guratan Singh, and Mia Rabson.